let's look at the topic two that's about uh, what is the kind of a method and uh, levels of an employee empowerment when we talk about methods and levels of employee empowerment what is the kind of a way we try to provide an employee empowerment what are the different stages are there or levels are there and how exactly you know we can make the employee employee accountable for the decision making that's what exactly we're going to cover in this particular topic so now let's try to look at employee empowerment there are three levels of an employee empowerment uh, actually you know when we talk about three levels it's all about uh, you know uh, enabling the employee the first level could be enabling the employee to make a better kind of you know bigger decisions without having referred to a senior so that means it's it's like you know more kind of an employee empowerment and the second level could be you're involving the employee to improve the ways things are done and a third level is you're encouraging employees to play a more effective role in their work so that's why actually you know there are three levels we can make it out so when we look at three levels actually the fundamental level is your uh, you know how you will make sure that your employee does the effective kind of a productive outcome so that's what the first level second level is you can actually you know make the employee suggest many things and improve the way things are done and uh, you can give them a complete free hand to you know make them change the existing you know status quo and the third one is actually you know bigger bigger decisions uh, you know uh, areas where you try to take take up the you know kind of suggestions from the employee so these are the three different levels uh, employee empowerment can be done and let's try to look at what are the kind of an employee empowerment techniques uh, there are a number of different kind of you know uh, hr uh, uh, practices or strategies can be uh, adopted uh, to grant an employee empowered uh, to an extent so number of these discussions actually you know things are like uh, your informal participative decision making so that's more of an informal kind of participative decision making is nothing but we try to you know go and interact socially with the employee and uh, through the social kind of a discussion whether at the cafeteria or probably at uh, the workplace or it could be let's say out of the uh, workplace we try to you know casually find out that what is currently happening how are they feeling all about and what is the kind of you know uh, uh, changes can be brought in and that's the way actually we try to seek a lot of suggestions so that's the way actually you know we can make them suggest new new things in you know participating in the decision making but we can make it more informal instead of giving a blanket kind of an authority to them so we can make it more kind of an informal method the second kind of a thing is your job enrichment when we talk about job enrichment whichever kind of a job an employee is involved in each of this particular job area we try to you know probably more go more into specialized kind of an approach and we allow the employee to you know probably explore more and try to you know get in more specialized kind of an activity so that there is a you know complete kind of an uh, uh, what do you call it is in-depth expertise each employee gets about the particular job so that will be a challenging kind of a task for an employee so hence you know that will be get motivated and hence you know the employee can able to do a better job and the third kind of a thing is continuous improvement see it's same like your japanese kaizen technology where you know kaizen kind of a method where you know you try to do your existing job in a more innovative way and every time you know you try to improve upon and bring about new new kind of a methodology whereby the cost is also getting redu reduced and ultimately the quality is also you know getting uh, improved so this is the way we can look into it and the next one is actually you know uh, we make this is the highest level of an you know probably employee empowerment we can say like uh, we can make completely a self-managed work team that means independently one particular department or probably the team can be allocated and the team will be responsible overall for the entire outcome of that organizational processes so that's the way we can make it so these are the ways actually you know employee empowerment uh, we can adopt a different kind of a techniques and uh, in, when we provide an employee empowerment there are certain complications are there same like any other field so where you know what happens is like uh, completely uh, you know the managers will feel that they lost their control so that's one of the major kind of complications and uh, managers try to tighten up the screws and then you know try to probably you know tuck the kind of you know uh, what do you call it as the uh, the wag of the particular thing so these are the kind of you know thing managers will feel that they are threatened uh, their power has been taken over uh, by the subordinate so that's a kind of a feeling they'll be getting it so that's a way actually you know giving up a control can be 
threatening to some managers so that could be one complications and second kind of complications can be managers may not want to share the power uh, with somehow actually you know some somebody who is actually junior to them they don't want to look down back so that's a kind of you know feeling they'll be getting it and uh, some of the managers will uh, fear that they'll be losing their own space in their work uh, related area and ultimately you know the so special kind of a privilege uh, in the system will be get lost that's a kind of a complication so hence you know manager will try to always interfere so always in employee empowerment uh, you know on the negative side of it probably you know the managers psychological feeling can affect the overall employee empowerment uh, activities also let's look at the process of employee empowerment uh, there are actually you know number of steps are involved in uh, employee empowerment the first step is about identifying a process resources for empowerment and uh, when we talk about you know uh, reasons identify the reasons for an empowerment when we look at the identifying identifying the reason for empowerment every area if you look into it there are certain technical areas uh, the managers or probably the first line managers may not be involved at the uh, you know operational level and they'll be involved only at the decision making level so those kind of an areas where when the employee have been given an empowerment they will find out the cause of the defect and they will try to fix the problem there itself so that's an idea behind it so that's a way actually you know every area it has got its own special kind of an you know reason behind it so we need to identify the reason for an empowerment that's the first step second step is actually change the behavior of a senior management because always senior management will feel that they need to have the entire control on the organizational processes and uh, if, if they have a fear that you know if we leave the control or delegate the authority to a junior level things might go wrong so that's such kind of a feeling you know mindset we need to you know the senior management has to come out and ultimately senior management has to be committed to develop the entire employees and uh, that's why actually we need to change the behavior of the senior management third step is third process is you are determining the impact of an employee decisions what level if we given an opportunity for the junior level to you know take a decision making and what is the way actually it will have an impact on the overall processes and that kind of you know uh, impact has to be worked out and uh, finally you know over a period of time the highest level of uh, empowerment is your your work team and uh, you try to you know develop a lot of independent teams and make the independent team actually you know i'll take a decision making in terms of allocating the resources and make sure that whatever kind of you know operational uh, pro activities or probably you know process has to be done let them do on their own ultimately you know the result has to be you know better and uh, you know the next uh, process is you're sharing an information you need to share the information as to what are the kind of a trend which is going on and what is the kind of you know goal and what is the kind of a path in which the entire decision making is going on we need to you know probably correct wherever necessary and try to you know probably uh, select the right kind of an employee profile them train them communicate what is expected out of it so these are the ways actually you know employee empowerment uh, process can be done and uh, let's look at the credo of an empowering manager uh, credo is nothing but the kind of a policy what we look at it actually you know that has to be very closely looked into it instead of being so autocratic we can try to you know build a policy through which we can try to control the entire employee empowerment and the organizational processes so for that you know we need to demonstrate the value of you know um, demonstrate that every employee has been valued so that has to be showcased the second thing is whatever kind of a leadership the vision the vision of a leader has to be shared within all the stakeholders of the employee and uh, you need to share the goals and direction in which you know things has to move we need to trust the people and then give them a complete empowerment and provide an information for decision making as to what kind of a decision making will lead to what is the kind of an outcome and uh, we need you know probably talk about past kind of an experiences and uh, we can also you know try to look at uh, what is the kind of an you know, outcome and the probability and other things and all we can try to you know educate them and ultimately you know delegate an authority and impact an opportunity not just a, you know more work but don't give more work but it, it kind of you know it's like uh, in their own work let them take a decision making and provide a better kind of you know uh, what you call it as the outcome and ultimately we need to frequently give the feedback as to what is right and what is wrong so we we can correct it uh, wherever they are going wrong and we need to solve the problem instead of you know pinpointing on the people uh, mistakes and ultimately listen and learn and ask questions to you know 
pro uh, ask questions and provide guidance as to you know whether they are going on the right direction these are the ways actually you know empowering uh, employees we can build a kind of you know policies there are certain challenges are there in employee empowerment uh, the challenges could be let's say like uh, some of the junior level executives or probably junior level employees they may not establish a communication once the uh, employee empowerment has been done so there is a message disconnect can happen number one number two there could be an insufficient kind of a training and because of that you know employee can take a wrong decision making or they might you know misuse it or probably sometimes they because of the lack of a training their expertise on you know taking a right kind of a decision making might go wrong third one is a reluctant manager uh, you know they they might try to you know uh, try to fix or probably try to uh, you know protect all the kind of a decision making and there could be an organization structure would be break down because formally the reporting structure reporting thing will not happen in the same way so there will be a lot of you know deviation on that so these are the ways actually you know employee empowerment can be get affected